Hi everyone, I'm Yishun. Today, I'll be bringing you on a behind-the-scenes tour of the Singapore Botanic Garden Seed Bank. Follow me! Welcome to the Seed Bank. Here, we can store up to 25,000 species of plants. Fruits and seeds come in a multitude of shapes, sizes, colours and textures, ranging from the smallest seeds, such as this from tropical orchids, all the way up to the biggest seed in the world, which comes from the double coconut. Seeds are the primary means by which most flowering plants reproduce. Hence, seed dispersal is an important part of a plant survival strategy in the wild. There are four main modes of seed dispersal, wind, water, self and animal dispersal. Wind dispersed seeds have wings or tufts of hair to catch the wind and fly far from the parent plant. Moving on, we have some self-dispersed fruits over here. Self-dispersed fruits are often triggered to split open by drying, ejecting the seeds with explosive force. Here, we have some fruits and seeds which are dispersed by water. Water-dispersed plants are usually found in mangrove, coastal and riverine habitats. Their fruits often have a fibrous husk or buoyant seeds to float in water. Last but not least, some fruits and seeds are dispersed by animals. Animal dispersed fruits and seeds have hooks and grapples to cling to feathers and fur, or are fleshy and brightly coloured, attracting animals to eat them. Seed banking starts with the collection of fruits and seeds in the wild. When collecting, we ensure that we do not negatively impact the survival of wild plants. After collecting the seeds, the next step is processing them. Right now, we're in the seed cleaning lab. Here, seeds are cleaned and processed before storage. Fruits come in many shapes and sizes and can be dry or fleshy. Here, we have an example of a fleshy fruit and a dry fruit. For fleshy fruits like this, sieves can be used to separate the seeds from the flesh. For dry fruits, an aspirator is used to separate the debris from the seeds using air currents. So now that both seeds are clean, we'll be taking them to the dry room to proceed on with the drying. The dry room which we're in is kept at 15% relative humidity and 15 to 20 degrees Celsius. Once the seeds have dried to 15% humidity, they are counted and stored in these fall pouches. So now this is ready to be stored in the freezer. The freezers are kept at minus 20 degrees Celsius. Storage life approximately doubles for every 5 degrees Celsius reduction in storage temperature. Even after seeds have been frozen, our work is not yet done. We're now in the germination lab, where seeds are germinated at intervals to test their viability. After all, a seed bank is a valuable resource for conservation only if the seeds can be germinated into healthy plants. Germination tests involve sowing 30 to 50 seeds in media and recording the germination rate weekly. My name is Yoshua Kuhn. I'm a researcher at the Singapore Botanic Garden Seed Bank. Seed conservation is important as a safeguard to ensure that we have all the genetic diversity of the species we are trying to conserve. In cases where uh, drastic environmental changes actually affect the uh, populations of uh, plant species, we have in the seed bank the representative uh, genetic diversity that could be used to actually help the species recover. You can think of the seed bank as conserving the heritage for Singapore in two ways. One is that the seed bank is actually housed in a historical building that was part of Raffles College. In another way, we are conserving the natural heritage as a legacy for all future Singaporeans. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to find out more, you may visit the NPARC's website or visit us at the Seed Bank. Bye!